what is up winning team so we're continuing on we've been talking about baby reindeer i've been talking to you guys about my thoughts on society society as a whole and how we are a corrupt contaminated jury of broken people making verdicts and decisions with a lack of actual intelligence um and i wanted to talk about the invisible enemy the invisible enemy that is the root cause of all this stuff that is happening which is of course the kingdom of darkness at large but specifically demons we want to get into now i did do a video about the origin of demons or what we can call unclean spirits or disembodied spirits in a previous video so you can go back in some previous videos and you'll find where the origin of demons i believe comes from right <clears throat> but today we're going to talk about how demons enter and i'm going to be reading from this book it's called pigs in a parlor um and it's by frank and ida may hammond and it's called the practical guide to deliverance the practical guide to deliverance and this whole book is about how we're going to get rid of the demons now one thing i i, I feel like goes that i think is severely unique about jesus christ as a character um to what um in the bible um, and just as a religious character in the world. I, you guys know I don't believe in religion. I'm fundamentally against religion. In fact, I believe religion is ungodly. Um, uh, but he is a popular character. One thing that I think people need to pay attention to is the things that Jesus actually did. Because you see what Jesus actually did and what the mission that was actually left to, the, to, the, to us to do. It was for healing and deliverance and all that kind of thing. Let me read the scriptures again. Where is this thing? I read, and this is why this scripture is a scripture I live by. Matthew, what is it? Matthew nine. You guys have heard me read this all the time because I believe this is a, this is a scripture of the times at hand, and I am believing for mass deliverance in this world. That's what we need. I really truly believe we need mass deliverance. So we're in Matthew nine thirty five, and Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the, his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So Jesus was moved in the world by the fact that seeing the state of the world and the things that Jesus did was healing the sick, casting out demons. You know what I'm saying? Spreading the good news that listen. I am the Messiah and I'm here and you can be saved. This is what Jesus was doing. So the fact that the modern society and modern church a lot of the time is just getting into some real dumb debates about is the rapture happening post-trib, mid-trib, after, like, I'm like, or other stupid discussions. Like, some, so many times, this is why I stopped listening to a lot of these Christian folks. They're here debating about dumb stuff. I'm seeing Christian pastors leaders discussing about r kelly and do we separate the artist from the music and people need deliverance we're dealing with demons the bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities so how do these demons enter and i just want to tell you what i find really fascinating about how they named the demons in this book because you know what the demons names are in here <laughs> This is an uncomfortable video because it goes into in here how they have demons that group themselves together and they work in groups, guys. They work in groups. This is a really good book. I'll give you guys some examples of the groupings that they've got here. Um, religious. So in the religious category, they've got ritualism, formalism, doctrinal obsession, seduction, doctrinal error, fear of God, fear of hell, fear of lost salvation, religiosity. These are demons, guys. These are what they're calling demons, right? Because demon, for me, in the most basic term to describe what I would say a demon is, it's any form of a negative spirit. Any form of negative spirit that is having some kind of an influence, right? So let's get into it. So... Actually, yeah, I'll read from the book because they've written it. They've, they've explained it well. De this is in chapter five, in case anybody wants to know. Demons are evil personalities. They are spirit beings. They are the enemies of God and man. Their objectives in human beings are to tempt, deceive, accuse, condemn, pressure, defile, resist, oppose, control, 
steal, afflict, kill, and destroy. Demons enter through open doors. They have to be given an opportunity. Here's where this stuff comes into the baby reindeer and the offense of people who are clearly carrying demons, right? Think of Jeffrey Epstein, think of Diddy, think of Diddy and think of how many open doors were created in all the things that he did and all those people and the same with Jeffrey Epstein and the same with R. Kelly and the same with this guy who affected Richard Gadd in Baby Reindeer because it was after this his life was somewhat it wasn't perfect but he was together as soon as he went through this he started to have some strange different things that he was doing right he started to have some issues that he didn't have before because a door had been opened he got into a relationship with a trans woman but he could not be sexually intimate, right? He is, however, sexually intimate with a stalker that has a weird obsession with him. Am I, am I, am I speaking or am I speaking? There must be an, open, an opening. In other words, one does not pick up a demon by walking down the street and accidentally bumping into one that is looking for a home. The organization of Satan's kingdom enables him to attack each one of us personally. There is not a person on the face of the earth who escapes his notice. He devises a plan to ruin and destroy each one. You guys need to hear this because this thing of people not believing in the spiritual world is such, it's probably the, the, one of the greatest defects of modern society, right? Um, it is a sobering realisation that you and I are definite targets of Satan's wiles, but how does he gain entrance? Now, first of all, he talks about sin. We're not going to get into that because I've talked about this many, many, many times about sin being a, a door of sorts. Um, um, because when we partner with the kingdom of darkness, we're giving the kingdom of darkness permission it's a legal contract. You see how it's all legal and law. You see how the devil is a truly, the devil is truly like uh, 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 the accuser, literally the accuser. It's literally the courtroom. This is why it all makes so much sense what the Lord says. So we're going to skip past sin because that one's a little bit obvious and I don't want to make this video, I don't want to do any more videos in this one today. Um... Oh, I can give you an example. Actually, no, we won't go into this. So we're going to go to life circumstances. This is the section I wanted to read. Evil spirit, spirits have no sense of fairness. This is, again, what I'm saying. In this game of life, we have to play with God because the enemy we're fighting does not fight fair. This is important. This is why everything is truly black and white on brand, on brand today. Um, because God is fair. If God is fair... Do you think Satan is fair? It doesn't happen. Winners, losers. Fair, unfair. Wise, fool. If you've been here for a while, you know what all these references are that I'm making. They never hesitate to take full advantage of times of weakness in a person's life. Of course, the weakest time in most lives is childhood. Are you hearing me right now, everybody? Are you hearing me right now? If you were planting a tree and you wanted to contaminate this tree, at what point would the contamination be the easiest? If you can contaminate it in seed form, because then it's just going to grow as a part of the tree and trying to remove the contamination by the time it's a full blown tree is going to seem like an impossible task, isn't it? That's what everybody's realizing probably in therapy right now versus trying to contaminate a whole tree after it's already grown. Interesting, I'm talking about trees and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life and childhood, hmm. isn't it? A child is completely dependent upon others for protection. 
Without question, the majority of demons encountered through ministry have entered the persons during childhood. Listen, what I haven't said about this couple is they do deliverance. These guys cast demons out. They've been casting out demons. They got to all this knowledge because of their experience of actually doing it. That's why they can write the guide. So these are the people of the real deal. Um... Christian parents need to understand their responsibility to protect their children as well as how to deliver their children from demon oppression. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord, give us, give me the strength and the wisdom to be able to protect my children. One of the first questions asked in pre ministry counseling is. How did you relate to your parents as a child? <sighs> In the majority of cases, this question opens the door for a listing of grievances for which the parents are blamed. How often I have heard such replies as, my father was an alcoholic. They go on to relate various fears associated with this condition in the home. There was insecurity and often poverty because father was unable to provide or spend the family income in support of his addiction. As a child in such a home grows a little older, he becomes embarrassed and ashamed. The quickest way to understand what doors were opened for demons to enter is to hear an account of a person's childhood. It's 26 minutes past two in the morning right now. Uh, so the witches, the warlocks as we speak, are all gang ganging up for witching hour to do all their seances and whatnot at three in the morning. <laughs> uh, this is the perfect time of day to pray, by the way. I think. But anyway, I want to point out something that I just realised. When we talk about passing things down, inheritance, because it actually goes on to the roots of inheritance next. Um, yeah, we'll come to this. Actually, it's going to be perfect because it just occurred to me that. So we have Adam and Eve, right? They've contaminated the, the species, the Homo sapien species, right? They've contaminated the Homo sapien species. And then they go on to have two sons, Cain and Abel. Now, Abel did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And Cain did not get the same regard for his uh, offering. Now, Cain was obviously given an opportunity to rectify the situation. He didn't. And instead killed Abel. So, if we all came... There's a whole generation till now that comes from Abel. We didn't even come from Cain. 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 Oh gosh, I'm getting confused. Cain killed Abel. Comes from Cain. And it's actually funny because if you look into the history of the Canaanites, it goes into Nimrod. Nimrod, foundation of Freemasonry. The, Rosicruc the Rosicrucians, the Illuminati. Isn't it interesting how these things descended through generations? Do you guys understand what we're dealing with here? Right, let's talk about inheritance on that note. Mark, isn't that an ironic topic to be talking about? Multiplied instances have been found where evil spirits were able to indwell persons through the ruse of inheritance. If a child is told that he is like his parents and can expect to inherit their weakness, he becomes vulnerable. My own mother was a very nervous person. When I was a young boy, she had a nervous breakdown. I developed a fear that I would inherit this weakness. The fear of being nervous actually opened me to the reality. My nerves began to give way. It was as though something was inside my body and crawling all through me. I would be, become very weak and unable to feel, fulfill my responsibilities as a pastor. The... Can I just talk about the importance? This is what I'm saying, guys, about the importance of a lifestyle of healing and deliverance. 
right? It's a lifestyle thing that we have to keep going because when we don't, it affects our ability to do our roles well. That's why I'm sorry to tell everybody in the world this, you ignoring your issues is not going to stop it from going on onto your children. You ignoring your issues is not going to stop it from affecting how you are at work and your work, how you work. You ignoring your issues is not going to is, is, is not going to stop how it affects your relationships and the people that you care about. You and your issues, right? Ignoring them is not going to stop you from, it's going to prevent you from having a relationship with God. The one person who can actually help with those issues. Why did God send Jesus with the ultimate power? Because he knows that we've got like all of these generations worth of issues and all these things that we need an infinite power, an infinite power to deliver us from. This is why I know that Jesus had to defeat death because death is the ultimate form of destruction and chaos. It is the ultimate form of destruction and chaos. Because when I was learning about entropy at university, shout out to Dr. John Tandy, best lecturer, best Dr. John Tandy, love that guy. When I was learning about entropy and the way that he described it, it would be something as simple as um, 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 uh, like you have an equation and it could be like A plus B gives you C, D and E, right? And you would say that the entropy has increased because the fact that there is more on the right than on the left means there's more disorder because there's more options of how those things can be ordered and therefore there's more disorder it's more disorderly than just two right and so that made me think that with death death what happens to us when we death we decompose we just keep splitting and 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 and, and breaking down into multiple pieces so i truly believe that death is the ultimate form of 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 um of destruction and that's why I also believe that hell is in and of itself chaos, which is, again, increasing entropy increases chaos, right? Because, again, it's more things to deal with. Just think about it yourself. Think about the difference between doing a load of laundry where you've got five items and doing a load of laundry where you've got 50. Chaos, right? The entropy has increased, Right? I believe that hell is a place of total disorder and I believe that heaven is a place of total order. And that's why I believe we're actually taking ourselves to hell. <laughs> right? And isn't it interesting that even in the law of entropy, that, um, the, that I can't believe I've become so much into the law of entropy. This is what I mean. Shout out to Dr. John Tandy. Like, shout out to Dr. John Tandy for, like, just being such an incredible teacher. Um... Uh, oh gosh, and just crazy. He wasn't even there in our first year. He came in the second year. It doesn't work at my university anymore. He moved on. I'm like, I don't blame you because they're, you're not valued there. So go off, King. Love that for him. Um, so um, what was I saying? So yeah, the law of entropy also states right that um, in order for entropy to be counteracted, an opposing force must come against it. Something has to oppose entropy because otherwise the universe is set up in such a way that entropy just happens alone without trying. Because why? Because we live in a universe that's governed by us. We think we know what we're doing and we don't know what we're doing. We eat from the truth, the knowledge of good and evil, right? And that's why I believe that the Bible is just telling us the journey of how entropy started. That's the Old Testament. Here's what you guys are like when you're left to your own devices, and here's my solution to help fix your mess as a good loving father that I am so that you can come and then live with me um, for the rest of eternity but if you don't want that it's up to you I'm a gentleman I'm not forceful unlike that that guy over there the, the, the enemy he is a predator right he will take advantage he will force himself onto you this is what all of this is about are we catching it? Are we getting it? Oh, I just remembered. I forgot to do something. Bear with me. Can I just say that this is literally my favourite time, my favourite part of my day. When I can record videos at night time, 
I this is literally the best part of my life, like other than obviously the Lord, but because uh, I just don't really like this planet and it's nice to actually study and learn about things. I really enjoy it. I really am a lifelong learner. Okay. So anyway, let's read. So he go he goes on to say, the doctor put me on barbiturates, which made me so drowsy I would have to go to bed. My workload would stack up and I would get more nervous. I was on a treadmill from which I saw no escape. Several times I came near resigning my church and leaving the ministry. He's about to talk about him getting delivered. Listen, so again, just like what the world does, we we, we put these band-aids on these wounds that are not and the wounds that are not healing, right? This is why, as I said, this lady I met yesterday yesterday the day before whatever day it was was talking about how she was going through depression and anxiety because she as a mental health who works as a mental health nurse she knows that she's not lost her mind it's just that she her husband just kicked her out of the house in february and she was homeless and she was severely distressed and everything from all the ordeals of everything she's just been through and so she knew, and she told me, she was like, the reason why I denied my doctor are offering me medication. Let's not forget, where does medication come from? The hospital. What is the hospital? The pharmaceutical industry. What's the pharmaceutical industry called? What does pharmacy mean? If pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakia. What does pharmakia mean? Witchcraft. Okay. Now, I'm not villainizing all medications, guys. I want to be very clear about this. Okay. I'm going to be very clear. What I'm saying is all of this stuff is being used to put a band-aid on top of the real issue. And that's why, have you noticed, the reason why I truly believe in demons as well is all the things that we struggle with as humans, we always have to manage it. Like addicts always have to like manage their addiction. You know, the sayings like, it's I'm always going to be an addict. Do you see what I'm saying again about the, the, the chain? First of all, you're contaminated, right? You tried your first drug. I thank God I didn't grow up in the United States. <sighs> Yo, I thank God I did not grow up in the United States, man. Uh, but anyway, I love me some America, but America loves some drugs, man. When I hear Americans talking about the drugs that they're taking, I'm like, jeez. Anyway, um, <laughs> first time taking a drug, contaminated gets into your system you like it a little bit you do it again now it's part of you it's it's in your system and your system is starting to adapt isn't it funny how our bodies adapt our, god built our bodies to be so adaptive to whatever we decide to put into it that it becomes a part of the functioning work of our body then contagious now you might be offering other people or hanging around with people that do what you do you know i remember at university i'd always laugh because you always have all the smokers and they're a little bit and all the drinkers and then you have like the people doing drugs obviously in the bathrooms because drugs are illegal <laughs> and you have like the people that do the people that do the cocaine go off in the bathroom the people that like to smoke cigarettes and you have the people that smoke weed then you have the people that are doing a bit of everything the people and you know whatever right you find your people and you all share and we're all just whatever and then eventually i'm an addict just like i said corrupt you now identify it and you hold that thing as who you are he now became nervous. It was now affecting everything in his life. And now it was to the point where he was not even able to fulfill the roles that he needed to do until five years ago, I was delivered from the demon of nervousness and related spirits. There have been no more crawling nerves and no more need for drugs. The demons that told me that I had to be like my mother were all liars. Praise Jesus. OK. If we allow him to do so, the devil will give us our inheritance. But the psalmist said of God, and this is in he shall choose our inheritance for us. Jeez. Jeez. If we do not receive our heavenly inheritance from the Lord, the Satan will enforce an inheritance onto you. Oh, yeah. He hates us because God loves us. That's why he hates us so much. He wants to take us out because like, how dare they get a second chance, third chance, fourth chance. They get a whole world made for them. They get everything and what? So that was Psalm 47, 4a. I found many others like myself who accepted the lies and fears suggested by the devil. Notice I says lies and fears. Again, the opposite of God. God, truth. 
Satan lies. God, power, fearlessness, courage. Satan, fear. Because the Bible says that God did not come to give us a what? Spirit. Notice how it even refers to that as a spirit of fear. I'm not making stuff up. But a spirit of what? Power, love and a sound mind. That's the verse of the season for the winning team. Okay. Many persons are collapsing from a fear of mental illness because a parent had this problem. The devil says, this is your inheritance. Do you know that a person can be so possessed by the fear of a mental illness that he will eventually end up in a mental hospital? I have seen many persons delivered from this particular tormenting fear. My father died of a heart attack. My mother was dying of heart trouble. Aunts and uncles had gone the same way. The devil kept telling me that this was my inheritance. I went to my doctor for a checkup. He asked questions about my family's medical history. When he found out about all the heart trouble in my family, he predicted that I would develop a bad heart. This is another reason I never go to the hospital. Because I'm like, you are not going to tell me something is happening inside me. I refuse to align with the words that these people say. I refuse. That's why even when I'm ill, right? I don't like to even say that I'm ill. I don't like to receive into my spirit. I don't receive into my spirit these words. You know what I do? I just pray, Lord, if there's anything going wrong, I trust you. <laughs> Fix it up, please. If I need surgery, can you do The Lord is the greatest surgeon of all time as well. I just like to point that out. God, the Lord is the greatest surgeon of all time, the greatest doctor of all time. Just wanna, just in case we didn't know. I don't align with these things because I'm like, no, because the second you start to, this is why the mind is so powerful. The second you start to receive something into your mind, because God gave us what? Dominion. Oh, you can't see it. Dominion, like it's written on my sleeves. The first page of the Bible says he gave us dominion. So the spiritual world responds to us. This is why the, the enemy is trying to force things onto us. Okay. Um, where is it? Uh, when he found out about all the heart, when I had the attack, oh, okay, I would develop a bad heart. At the age of 46, I went to the hospital suffering from chest pains. When I had the attack, someone gave me nitroglycerin tablet and the pain left instantly. The doctor could find no damage to my heart, but was sure that I had experienced a light heart attack. Two months after I left the hospital, I had a second attack. It struck me on a Sunday morning before I got out of bed. By this time, I had learned of the operation of demonic spirits. I announced to the congregation that we would have a special ministry meeting that afternoon in which they would minister deliverance and cast out the demon of heart attack. That was five years ago and I have had, an, I have had another pain in my chest uh, and I have never had another pain in my chest and no longer expect to have one. I do not accept the, pro, the preferred inheritance of the devil but accept the healing and health of the Lord Jesus. And here we have the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and life more abundantly. How many times have you guys heard me say that verse? John 10, 10. <laughs> irony. The irony is crazy. So you guys understand what I'm saying. This is why Jesus is the tree of life. This is why the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. This is why when after we put on our full armour of God, your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, your belt of truth, your um, sword of the spirit, shield of faith, shoes that spread the gospel of peace. This little flight. So this is why I can't open the fucking door window while I'm, while I'm, well, it's night time and have the, the, the light on. Um, after that, he says, and pray with all prayer and supplication. Let me find it. With all prayer and supplication. It's in like, what, Ephesians? Ephesians 6 or something, with all prayer and supplication, after you put on your armour, you then use your mouth. You then use your mouth, you guys. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? So we need, this is why, basically, all of this that I've just said in the last three videos, including this one, is me stating, me, um, me trying to pitch to you all that we need deliverance, and that deliverance needs to be a part of our, life, our lifestyle. Deliverance is a lifestyle for me. Listen, guys, I can tell you that I've come up against. This is, again, why I like when the Lord, you know, gives me opportunities. Because then I have opportunities to address things about myself that I don't like and get rid of it. 
Like you're done, you're gone, you're gone. This is why the, the, the demons, they don't like it when I realize stuff. Because they know that I'm going to get rid of them. They know that they can't just, um, they can't just have a field day with me and I'm going to ignore them. I'm going to pretend they're not there. I'm going to think, I'm like, I have the blood of Jesus. I'm getting rid of you. I don't have to, I don't have to pass this on. I don't have to give this to my children. I don't have to, I don't have to do none of that. I don't have to line up what people have to say. You know what I'm saying? This is why we have such an attack on our mind, right? That's why we have a helmet of salvation. It is here in Ephesians 6. And I'll read this whole little passage here. I love this. Because this is literally bringing together like everything. I used to talk about, this is bringing everything together. So it says, Ephesians 6 verse, oh, funnily enough, it's verse 6 talks, starts about talking about children and parents. Isn't that interesting? So Ephesians 6 verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand and having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, like the Bible, the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, protecting your heart, stay keeping in right standing with the Lord, right? Where are we? And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, you're walking in the peace and the gospel light message of Jesus Christ. The power of Christ is what you're walking in the gospel message. In all circumstances, take up a shield of faith, a shield of faith where you are shielding your faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, the lies of the enemy, the schemes of the enemy, particularly the lies that I feel like is important here um shield of faith when you put your faith in the lord you shield yourself from lies you shield yourself from um all the things that the enemy is trying to do right and take the helmet of salvation the helmet of salvation protect your mind whatever is going on in here whatever the enemy is telling you whatever you've been told whatever you were told even growing up whatever you even told yourself or you were whatever have this helmet of salvation to protect your mind to give you the mind of christ to remind you that no matter what has happened no matter where you've been no matter where you're going, no matter what you did today, no matter what mistakes you make, that the power of Jesus Christ is enough for everything and all of everything and is enough to free you completely. And that the love of God is, that is how strong the love of God is for you. And you wear that as a helmet. And it says, and the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit. So when all these voices, the lies of the enemy are coming into your life, how do you combat that? You combat that by the words of God. That's why I say to you guys, when the Lord tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's my sword to fight against the words of the enemy, to fight against the words of myself, to fight against the words of things that other people have said or the, or the, or, or the whatever. This is the sword, the Bible. And then it says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. So we have to pray ourselves. We pray, we use our voices. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Pray for everybody. And in opening, and also for me, that my words may be given to me in my opening, my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Listen to this. That I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Paul wrote, wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus while he was in prison. He was in prison. Who remembers the prison videos? I was talking about prison recently and Hitler being in prison. There's something about when you're in prison and you're prepared to do what it takes. You're prepared to do something and you're prepared to go to prison for what you believe in. That brings out a different kind of power. Yeah. That same notion, Paul, Hitler. Wow, I love my life. So cool. And on that note, I've been praying to the Lord for opportunities for mass deliverance. Okay, I'm in the, I'm just like, Lord, we need deliverance. Let's just all get delivered because I've experienced my own. And can I tell you that it is just amazing. Like, that's why I feel so light. I'm so happy. I'm so full of joy because like my mind is clear. Like, <laughs> so like you need therapy. I'm like, for what? <laughs> the Lord is the greatest therapist of all time. 
How about that? How about that? <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been so deep. I love it. I love it so much. This has been so deep, you guys. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it. I'm just trying to save the peoples. I'm just trying to free the peoples. I'm trying to free the peoples. That's all I'm trying to do. Maybe it's because I'm American. <laughs> if life's a game, let's play to win. God bless you all. And I'll see you in the next one.